Okay, so what we're gonna be showcasing is the triangle footwork. Anybody who wants to learn AFC, this is the first thing that they need to learn. Because footwork is the foundation, and no matter how tall the building is, if the foundation sucks, it's always gonna collapse. So that's SGM's uh, line of thinking. You have to have a strong footwork basis first, right? So the way he starts off fighting is bladed or so profiled shots, right? Both toes are pointed this way, and then when we're ready for fighting, for, for fighting stance, we twist into it. Back heel off the ground, right? So first we're here, and back heel off the ground. Okay, so let me demonstrate. Julius, can I borrow your flag? Based from this stance, right, how easy that can move, okay? So now, now, put your feet on this line. Yeah, okay. Now, I want you to twist towards me with the back heel off the ground. Both feet. So try it again. Go face that way. Okay. And twist. Okay. Again, his, he's more stable. All he did was, instead of starting off like this, he started off profile and twist into it. Somehow, it, it makes him a little bit more stable than just going straight into the boxing sense. So again, I'm just gonna use this line as a marker, right? I'm profile shot, then I'm gonna twist into it. That's strike one, ready for, uh, ready for fight sets, right? So we have Marita and Reagan, my two students, to help us here. So we're here, fighting stance, twist. Okay, so we're gonna do the, th the four count first, okay? So the four count is one to the face, then you scoop the ice cream, top of the head two, and then top of the head three, and then twist again, flywheel into this position. Okay, one more time. So that's one, two, three, if you notice I'm twisting, and four. Okay, now we're gonna add the footwork to it. One, two, three, and four. Okay, so that's the, that's the basic footwork. We're going one, two, three, and four. Then the three count. We're in this position, we're gonna start with one, two, and three. Again, one, two, and three. Okay, so notice that our fighting stance, I'm, I'm so, you know, I, I, as soon as we do the last flywheel, it, the forearm is still up. Okay, so we're gonna have my students kind of demonstrate. We're gonna do. We're gonna be going back and forth for three to four count, three to four count. One, One two, two, three, four. Three. Four. One, two, three. Two, three, the three, four, one, then four, two, three, one, then three two, after this, three, four, one, two, three. All right, so part of the training tools that we're using are these colorized cones, right? So they represent my favorite Skittles. Actually, they have no representation whatsoever, except that these are training tools. Right, so when I have new students and I want them to learn the footwork, I don't want them to necessarily look down all the time, but I want them to memorize where the color, the, the color situation is. So when I tell them to strike, uh, step into blue, they're just gonna bring their feet back here. Right, then I step, tell them step to green, then they're here. Then back into orange, into flywheel. So if I say green, that's the strike. If I say blue, that's the strike. If I say green or orange, that's the strike, right? If I say green, then orange here, then I switch, right? So now, and then, so then blue, that's the strike. Green, that's the strike. Orange, that's the strike. Then I go blue, orange, yellow, we're back into this position. So the colors are just there to kind of help us help the student dis the, figure out the footwork mechanics, you know, just keeping it simple as possible. Okay, so again, now we're gonna be working on some more of the, uh, the application of this when we're, when we're sparring somebody. So the thing about Amara Finding Concept, we have some, we, we all know in FMA, back up, that this is Largo, right? Where we can hit 
just the extremities of our hands, right? And then Mija is usually when we can hit their shoulder, and Corto is usually when we can touch with both hands, right? With Amara fighting concept, it's more like extreme Corto, where my hand is behind her, right? So when we're sparring, land, 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 disarm. The concept here is that the moment that she, her fist goes beyond my wall is when I start disarming her, right? So if you notice that when we first start sparring, I'm keeping the 90 here, tumba tumba, top of the head, get to the other side here, here. But now that's where I got where I want her and disarm again. So. The trick is, is that if she's going to stay extreme corto with me, the trick here is keeping my composure, not letting, not letting her Check my hand where she can, where I go beyond the wall and she can disarm me. I'm keeping it here where I'm just letting the tip land, bam, to the top of her head, side of her head. Again, here, to her ribs. Pop it up this way, again to the ribs, lock it down. Here, boom, back here again, boom, good, boom, good, there you go. This arm. I mean, SGM Val is very adamant. Life stick training is, is, is one of the better exercises, but something that we have to do so that we're not afraid of the stick. A little bit taller than I am, right? So I'm gonna have to cut off his feet. No, just kidding, maybe, I don't know, we'll see. So he strikes. Land, 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 land. Man. <laughs> Thanks. So, in that exchange, he barely, he actually put that right foot back, the other right foot back, come over here. He brought this all the way out here. So, what did I do? I didn't focus on this, it's too far. I started going here, away from his stick. So he's trying to push my hand up, but I'm letting it drop, drop. Then I could pull him this way if I wanted to. But what I decided to do, from what he was doing earlier, I'm dropping it, dropping it, hitting him in the back, back of his head, flywheel. Right, of course, I'm purposely missing because I don't want to hit him with a flywheel. Then he's trying to hit me, right? When I, when I sense that stick is coming, I'll go for the disarm, right? So, but as long as his right foot is back, his stick is too far. If I overreach, he can grab my hand yes, sir. and control me. I want to keep it here, the double 90. So what I, what I do to Reagan is I make him extend his double his 90. Yes, sir. Right? He follows my hand. Look, he's already fully extended. So from here, pop, pop, pop. Because of my wrist dexterity, he can't really stop that strike. Boom. Into it. While his stick, see he got beyond the wall. Thanks. Well, it's called, we call it free, free, free sparring. No armor, no power. 
where we we the the goal here is to let them feel the strike if you notice that i'm connecting i'm not hitting the air the only time i'm purposely hitting the air is when i do that flywheel because it's too much of a de devastating strike because just because physics is against me i'm letting the gravity and just the whipping technique come uh, come down and hit him so but overall that when i'm when i'm connecting I'm making sure that I make that body contact without hurting him, right? Because I can just, I can always add power later. All right, so just so that we, you know, like I said, I wasn't giving any power. People might be wondering, oh, well, was there any power behind that? So when I do reverse plancha, it's here. Then I come, I do an X pattern, here, boom. Flywheel, Fly. If he puts the, stick, the cage, uh, the, punching bag on the other side so he can you can hear the when I hit the back strike to the other side here so that we when we're doing live sparring I'm making that connection but I'm not giving any power because I can always add power later so he goes to the other side again goes to the other side right goes to the top of his head flywheel into it the next pattern Plants up. It's all part of it.